So where are we? What is going what's going on right now? Because it it seems to be accelerating at a relentless pace. I think we're at the point of economic social takeoff. Not necessarily this takeoff we've been talking about in terms of super intelligence that's ooh, kind of scary. But in terms of this technology impacting real lives, real economies, real social structures. Because it's a combination of two things. It's like, you know, a vector. It's the magnitude of transformation. AI reaching human level in digital and physical form and the diffusion of the innovation. Like overnight today, we were just talking about this, uh, Alexa plus comes on and Alexa goes from being stupid to smart because it's powered by Claude, you know, it's just been announced by Andy Jesse. And all of a sudden it's in front of every single prime household, which is how many people suddenly have access to super intelligence, right? And so we've never seen anything like this before with those two things. And then there's this term, you know, hysteresis. <laughs> you can't go back to where you've come. So we're going to see in industry after industry, social structure after social structure, irreversible changes. I don't think anyone's really prepared for it, you know, which is even scarier. Yeah. You know, what I'm observing is I know IQ is a pretty bad way of looking at these things, but the models now have an IQ of over 150 and it doubled last year alone. And it's probably going to double again this year. So in which case, we're then beyond all humans. And then a year after that, it just, and it possibly goes exponential or it continues like a Moore's law of. Exactly. Whatever that means. <laughs> What's exponential? What's a 200 IQ? We don't know, right? No. But like one of those things is we don't know. So it gets very confusing. But the question is, how often do you need someone with 140 IQ or 180 IQ, right? And the example I like to give of this, you know, um, there's a great blog, Wait But Why? And he has this um, thing of cooks versus chefs. And everyone's on this spectrum from being a cook to a chef. The chefs come up with the recipes and the cooks follow and execute on them. Now, the thing that's scary and we can't get our heads around is AI is chefs. AI is just creative and doing all this stuff, right? The thing that we can get our heads around is AI is cooks. AI doesn't make mistakes, right? And I think that's what's being underappreciated here because you need 110 IQ for that. And when you look at the global average weighted IQ, it's like 90 because many countries don't have the infrastructure and other elements to have the higher IQ, right? So I think we've got two steps. One is the super chef cooks. Then it's what on earth these super chefs mean. So there's something going on as well within the space. We'll come onto the whole economic side in a bit, but we're starting to see what we thought were constraints in AI, which was compute and energy, now suddenly not being constraints. The deep seek model and a bunch of other things have now kind of liberated all of this and said, well, these models can self-learn and they're going to accelerate faster than we ever imagined with the same amount of compute and the same amount of energy. Yeah, and the scary thing is we don't have a lower bound for this. So, you know, in my previous company, Stability, we had hundreds of millions of model downloads, and we built models that were orders of magnitude more efficient than anyone else. And DeepSeeker kind of followed from that, also a former hedge fund manager, which is always nice to see. Yeah, that's him. hilarious, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, again, for the listeners, I used to be a hedge fund manager, then AI, and DeepSeeker is the same. I encourage all hedge fund managers to become AI founders. The thing is, most models are still full of crap, and we don't know where the lower bound is on the energy per inference or the energy per job done and this is the really scary part because we're still using these general purpose chips versus these specialized chips we're still coming up with the recipes and coming up with a recipe takes a hundred times the compute of actually doing it a second time so like when we made stable diffusion the image model maybe it cost five ten million dollars you know all in testing and everything then within a year or so someone was able to make a model of the same quality at fifty thousand dollars if you look at the pace of NVIDIA's chip drilled up and the speeds there, and you analyze everything, um, I'll give you an example here. Just if everything else was the same, we brought on our Ezra One cluster at Stability in August of 2022. It was a dedicated cluster built by Amazon. It was 4,000 A100s, these NVIDIA chips, and it would have scored on the top 10 fastest public supercomputers in the world. It was 10 times the compute of NASA. In about a year, that same cluster will maybe cost $20 million or $30 million. 
with the new NVIDIA GB 300s. It's, you know, what Jensen had as his shield on that presentation. Like a single box the size of this room will be able to train a DeepSeek model, but then your phone will be able to run it. And we don't know again where the lower bound is on that, which is something really scary. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, look, if you enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button and check out the video here on the right-hand side. I'm sure you'll enjoy that one as well. And if you're ready for more, go to realvision.com forward slash join. I'll see you there.